Boo yeah! Hey guys, it's Mark Shea here. You're watching another episode of Exploring Australia. Got something special for you today. So get ready. Check it out! Baby. Yeah, so today we are on the hunt for the Peter Rush's sculptures. I think I got that right. Um, for basically, there's an artist who has um, gone around and made sculptures out of driftwood, and they're just in random spots. And so the big thing about it is they're not really located. Yeah, you know, like there's little bits of information on where they roughly are but you gotta go and find them. So we're out and about now, trying to find them, and we have found the very first one. Yeah guys, so it's high tide, so the first one's a little bit of a disappointment for you, because it's a bit far away, and I'm not getting wet because we still got a lot of, I'm not getting my feet wet in that because we still got a lot of traveling to do to find others. So um, that's the first one that we found, which is an elephant. Like I said, he's sculpt, what is it then? Uh, Dino Popples, it's uh, the dinosaur version of a wombat. I've written it down. Oh, okay, so, um, yeah, it's a dinosaur version of a wombat, apparently. It looks just like an elephant. So, or a mammoth. <laughs> oh, there's a mammoth later, apparently. So, that is the, the first one. Please save me! <laughs> I'm Chucky, help me! Come get me out of this bag, she's got me! Well, while we're out and about on the hunt, we've come across another one of the sculptures. It is a monkey given a peace sign. We are looking at these things at high tide. We have checked the tides and it is high tide. So, it's harder to actually see and harder to get to. So we are at Long Jetty. Ooh, at the entrance, New South Wales. And here is another sculpture, the monkey. <laughs> the hunt continues. So we are going to be heading down to the beach and somewhere way over there is the next sculpture. So we're going to be taking a little bit of a walk and seeing how we go. So for those that are curious where we are at, should we give away the location that we're at or make people look for them themselves? 
Yeah. So I will give you one location where one of these things are. We are at Spoon Bay. So you go to Spoon Bay Road to the end and there's a walking track down to the beach. You turn to the right. And from our information, we walked up the beach for about 15 minutes. And it looks like we have found our next target. The walking whale. The walking whale. So the, here we go. I would actually be inclined to call it the walking shark, but it is considered the walking whale. So we have found the walking whale. Uh, and as an added bonus, we actually stumbled across the creator himself in the middle of making his next creation. And he was gracious enough to give us a couple minutes and talk to us. And I actually got to interview him. So right now I'm gonna cut away and you can hear from the man himself. Here's Pete Rush. Okay guys, well, we've got a real treat today. We've actually stumbled across in our hunt, the actual uh, sculptor of all these great art, works of art, and we've caught him building his new one. So, um, what inspired you to do this? Uh, this one was a matter of, everyone is an experiment. So this is how big can you make something out of sticks. Um, this is lantana, which I pulled out of the bush up here. Um, so basically the, the question for me is how big can you make one? So I've made, I'm making this monster, it'll be revealed next week. Uh, absolute monster, 15 meters long, about eight meters tall. <laughs> wow, and how, how far is the, the sculptures spanned out that you've, you've done so far? How far? Like, oh, on the coast? Yeah, up the coast. Um, I've gone up to, um, what's it called, Long Jetty. And then from Long Jetty to Kilcare at the moment. But I'll go where the stuff is. That's all it is. And um, I've come up here because on the lake here is all this uh, weed. And, and I made, I made a, recently made a um, uh, diprotodon because the weed up here was orange and it looked like fur. And that led me to make a diprotodon because because of the fur, so I'll go where the stuff is. Now around these, and I'll say this is on a lake, around these lakes are these fantastic um, Casarina forests, but they're all being choked by um, lantana. But lantana is my friend. It's the most amazing stuff to sculpt with. And you can probably come a little, you'll see it here. You can bend it, it's light, you can break it too easily. <laughs> um, but it's just the most beautiful stuff to work with. And it's a weed, right? And people, it's just choking these forests. So I'm doing a good thing by getting it out, but and yet I get to work in these amazing spots. And this large animal here will be in a, in a natural setting that it would have been in. And, to, and, and until today, you haven't been caught in the middle of making one. <laughs> You're the first three to spring me. <laughs> and, uh, I got you sworn to secrecy, but in a week's time when it's finished, please come back and uh, we'll do a, a proper thing and you'll see this thing finished. Awesome, thank you so much. Cheers guys. Yeah, that was Pete Rush. And you can find him on Instagram at Pete Rush Sculptor, Sculptor, O R. And um, yeah, and the hunt continues. The hunt continues. We've got two more now to find here. We heard it from the man himself. So it, how awesome was that, that he took his time out of making his most recent sculpture?
to give us a little interview. Anyway, yes, we were told by him himself that there's two more down here. Because unfortunately, a lot of the sculptures that people want to see have been damaged by storms or they're just gone. Like uh, there was a couple that we were going to look at, but recent storms have just totally decimated them and they're no longer there. So that's a bummer. But we're finding what we can in one day. So let's see how it goes. So the race is on. The clouds are getting funky. There's slight sprinkle. So here we can end up with some heavy rain or storms even. So this will be really interesting. It's been a really good day. You know, we started out looking for a bunch of sculpt sculptures that um, have been hidden around. And in our little travels, we actually stumbled upon the artist himself. And we got to speak to him and you got to hear a little bit more about why he does what he does. And now we're after a spot that has two sculptures in it. So the real challenge is to get there. I don't know if you can see the clouds behind my head, but they're not too pretty. So it's, let's go. We got stuff packed. So if we do get stuck in the downpour, will be sweet but anyway let's continue the hunt the clouds do not look kind and we just heard a big rumble of thunder so it'll be interesting the hunt is on where is it we know one's near the car park here and the other one's down the beach so the question is which way do we go You've got a big scrotum. Look at you. The gobble gobbles is what we were reduced to while we wait for the rain to pass so we can continue the hunt. We've actually found our next sculpture, but the rain is stopping us from getting there without soaking us and trashing the cameras. So we're sitting out the rain, it shouldn't be too long and we can make a dash across the beach. So it has stopped raining and we're gonna make a run to see if we can get there before any more rain comes. So the hunt continues. <laughs> is there and the tick is supposed to be around there so we're gonna go from the echidna and then see if we can find the tick <laughs> little bird chasing him <laughs> Making our way slowly. A hundred meters before we get to the echidna. I can see it. I hope you can too. It's just up here. So we're almost there. Woohoo! Another one down. Okay, the hunt continues. We got the echidna behind us, now we're off to see the tick. And we're burning daylight, because we got storm clouds coming. As you can see behind me. So now we gotta try and find the next one before the rain comes and the sun goes, and I can't film anymore because there's not enough light or it's too wet. 
So we're starting the march. Let's go. So you may be wondering, what are we looking for here? I hope you can hear me over the wind, because the wind's getting worse. Um, but like I was mentioning, the clouds are coming over. So what are we looking for? Apparently there's a giant tick. He actually did a sculpture. He actually created a sculpture that got damaged. Because a lot of these sculptures get damaged just by the wind and the, and the storms and that. So he took, yeah. So he took his old sculpture that got damaged and he created a giant tick, apparently with its head to see. So that is what we're looking for now. So we're trying to find it. And the race against time is on. That's a boat. <laughs> well, we think we found it, but we think it's been damaged. This, this definitely looks like a sculpture. But you can see behind all the debris. Because it's supposed to be a tick with its head in the sand. So it looks like this one got trashed as well, unfortunately. Oh, what a bummer of the day. It's definitely similar to the other work he's done. Yeah, it looks like it's been, it's been tied together. But this could be also the one that was damaged that he made the tick from. Now it looks like a whale. Yeah, I know, it looks like a boat almost. Or is it just a pile for a pump like that? But like I said, look at all the debris here, so it almost looks... Well, was that where it's been? Like, this, this is its head. Or has it been damaged? Is that where the head went into the ground? Because it could have been here and lifted up and maybe got trashed. It's in the location that we were told. I'll walk down a little bit further and see if I can see anything. So I'm going to talk to the camera in this wind. If it's too bad, I'm not going to put it up. If it's not too bad, then I will. So you may be wondering what the go is. Well, some of his works, like he uses lantana, which is a weed. So he's actually stripping a lot of the weed to make the sculptures out of on the beaches. It uh, turns out he's used as a lot of driftwood. You know, it's like he doesn't cut down anything or any, you know, he doesn't cut down anything to make his sculptures. It's just totally what he finds around the area. And that's what makes it so interesting. I think I found it. Yes, I found it. Well, how about that? That wasn't the tick. It would have been a hell of a giant tick if it was. So, I found the tick, which is good. It means, whew, we got the next one. It would have been a bummer to end the video because I think I don't think we're going to be finding any more today. It would have been a total bummer to find the video, to finish the video with a broken sculpture. But now I will present to you the giant tick.
awesome was that? What a great day. We found five of the sculptures and oh, and then we of course we we caught Pete making his latest creation and we were invited back. You know, we couldn't show anything now, so we were invited back for when it was finished at the unveiling. That's going to be awesome. We're going to really try and get back there and show you that real soon. Uh, as soon as it's finished and yeah get out there and have some fun on the central coast in New South Wales and try and find these sculptures they're around I've given you lots of clues some some of them I've actually told you where they are and it's just fun to go search for them and have a look and stumble across them and yeah he's an amazing artist and he's taking driftwood and weeds like lantana and that and making something really interesting and beautiful and a lot of times there's something behind it well, I'd say every time, sorry. <laughs> like from the prehistoric wombat, well, it's the predecessor from the wombat that we started it off with today. We had the monkey in, uh, in the lake uh, at Long Jetty. But yeah, so get out there, explore, try and find things. He's an amazing artist, making something really unusual. And make sure you check out his Instagram. And I'd like to thank Pete for the interview today. You know, at least we got a little bit of insight about why these sculptures are popping up in uh, wooded areas and oh, bush areas and beaches and what's behind it. So I hope you enjoyed that. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, smash like, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And big thank you for Conceptual Creative who helped me get around and make these videos. So make sure you give them some love. Check them out. You know, they do web hosting and web management and all that sort of stuff. Anyway guys, I'm Mark Shea, this is Exploring Australia, see ya!